the last the last few weeks have been crazy for me, especially the last last 24 hours. I went to sleep thinking I was fighting Vitor Belfort, and I woke up the next day uh, and realized that he already switched to another fight. You know, so that kind of messed me up. But rewind a little bit, um, three or four weeks back, uh, I had a real bad back problem, and uh, I went to the doctor, found out that that I had a spinal fracture, and. Um, you know, so that, that put me out for like three weeks. I didn't bend my back, I just kept it straight. I'm like, I'm just gonna get the rest I need to to make this fight happen and push through it. And uh, again, back in there, training, it took me a whole week to kind of get my mind wrapped back around it. But I was like, this is a huge fight, I'm gonna do it. And there is no way I was gonna back out of that fight. Once I started back and I got going, I put a lot of thought, thought into it and I was going full force ahead at the end of this week. Mm, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty weird, you know, waking up. Uh, think, feel, finding out about Vitor, and uh, you know nothing. Nothing really presented itself. You know, I, I didn't get any offer. You know, I didn't get any offers. I don't know. Um, really, to tell you the truth, like like I said on Twitter, it was a blessing to me. Uh, it was my opportunity to say, you know, God's trying to tell me something. I don't know what UFC number it was. I, I'm confused with all those numbers, but it was in Ireland, probably five, six years ago. Yeah, I remember you walking like, you walked past me and I don't know, I said something like, because the one thing I remember from that fight was, and like, like, like everyone else, everyone thought Dennis Kang was gonna win. He's this, you know, superstar in Japan, vicious, and um, everyone thought he was gonna run. Uh, yeah, yeah. And in that fight, we saw Alan Belzer's just ferociousness, his fearlessness, and that's, I remember like, thinking that's something you can never teach anybody. You're just born with that fury and that fearlessness. And I, that was the first thing I said to Alan. I just wanted to let him know. I'd never talked to him or anything. I said, man, you know, you got all the potential in the world. Because when it comes to technique, ground technique, wrestling or striking, you can learn that, you know, but you can't learn the fearlessness. And that's what we saw in that, that fight against Dennis Kang was just, Ferocity, man. You just, you know, you just hope people are born. You hope your fighters have that, you know. But not very many fighters have that. Yeah. Chris Weidman. Uh, I mean, I think that fight makes sense. I, you know, I think that I do. I think he's the, the number one contender. I, I don't know about that. But uh, you know, I think that he's definitely, you know, he's definitely up there. To add in some more offensive wrestling, so I'm bringing in some some high level coaches and some high level training partners for wrestling and also um, a little thing that uh, I I'm, hope I'm not leaking anything but um, you know uh, the genre of uh, the, the UFC and MMA fighting the evolution has been like this in the beginning um, or I won't even say the beginning just rewind back to like uh, Sakuraba Going for uh, going for standing Kimuras and and uh, you, you see still see some flying submissions and stuff, but there wasn't as much emphasis on uh, defensive wrestling. And when wrestlers really started um, learning MMA and taking everybody down, everyone wanted to learn that. They wanted to learn how to smash the, the wrestlers or how to do wrestling against them. And that's why that's something that's really slow slowed down the sport is where. Um, you know, and I've been there too, and I put a lot of time in wrestlers. I love wrestling buddies. I love, you know, Ben Askren. He's awesome, and nothing against it. I, I would never give back or take back what I've learned. It's given me a really good foundation. But now I'm ready to start attacking wrestlers with more submissions. And uh, man, my buddy David Avalon is awesome at it. So um, standing Kimuras, uh, using the Kimura from the feet on the ground all over to do different stuff and, and, and you know not just trying to to out wrestle them get on top but uh, use these um, flying submissions and these standing submissions like the Kimura to uh, to you know get an advantage on the on the uh, wrestler you know because I'm sure I'm going to face someone that's going to going to be able to out wrestle me it's just you know it's, it takes years to learn that so um, uh, David came up with this Kimura trap system and um, you, you'll see me drilling it. You know, I, I put, make that part of my drilling, my drilling list uh, a couple times a week um, to, to get in there and do some standing 
uh, Kimuras from a lot of different positions and uh, on the ground too. Um, the Kimura trap's awesome. Um, if you want to check it out, uh, all you got to do is uh, go to uh, takedowntrap.com. That will take you right there and uh, and check it out. You'll see probably some of the same moves that I'm working in my my drilling sessions here in my in my sparring. Um, right there that, that he gives away for free. I just recently teamed back up with John Dixon. Uh, you'll see him in the videos. Um, he's there three days a week holding pads for me. Um, you're going to see some cool people um, from, from around the world uh, stopping in. I got new people coming in every week. I don't see a title shot even happening. That, you know, Anderson still is in a point where he needs to be fighting John Jones. He needs to be fighting GSP, you know, if I'm Anderson Silva's manager, that's what I'm telling him to do. You know, don't mess around with Alan Belcher, Chris Wyden in there. You know, so um, I ain't even worried about that. Something's got to happen. Something's got to give there. Um, so if I'm not fighting Vitor in Brazil, then uh, I don't see that happening. So, so who knows, man? Uh, positions from right the begin with your mind fresh. You know what I mean? Body's not sweaty, so you gotta tie it up the game a little bit, doing some doing some jiu-jitsu, like ground and pound defense, working triangles, omoplata, sweeps, going to the back, very technical training, you know, so the boys are doing really good. And then after that we're gonna do the cross training with shadow boxing, wrestling, and then inspire the end. So Daniel is my coach. He's he's the head coach, he's pretty much taking over my camps the last uh, last few camps. And I've been to Brazil with him training. He's been up to Milwaukee with me, so he's uh, he's more and more getting more involved in my life and being here all the time. Now um, he's here with me full time, year round, and um, you know he loves it, man. Just like I do when we, we bring people in, you know, high level wrestlers, high level jujitsu uh, fighters, jujitsu coaches, you know MMA, Muay Thai coaches, and you know, everybody gets along with Daniel. Awesome, Daniel Marais is his game is really small and detailed and tight and it's just some awesome um jiu jitsu that it, it, it's just it's so ridiculous rodney my boxing coach um is, is uh we love daniel what's up and, um, hey rob uh, the guys are getting a chance to go with eddie right. and, uh, jacob leckage Lech and uh, uh, uh jason knight go with them it's our two best Guard, uh, rubber guard technicians. Jason's been doing Gogo Plata's rubber guard since he was 14 years old. Uh, Jacob's doing pretty, pretty good with him. He's doing, he's uh, pretty solid for a 42 year old man. Pretty amazing. You know, it was, it's been a pretty wild 24 hours. Uh, John Jones is getting ate up on the internet. Oh my God, it's crazy. So. I don't know. I don't know what the UFC is saying. I've only heard, I've tried to take, I even watched ESPN with the volume off, um, just not on purpose or anything, but I was just uh, sitting down and I saw it and I was reading it and, uh, you know, so I haven't even actually heard anybody say any, anything about it. Um, but uh, I, I think, I think that John Jones and, and Greg Jackson, they didn't they didn't make a bad move, but whenever you're both uncomfortable with a fight and your coach is telling you're uncomfortable with a fight too it's pretty it would be pretty hard to take that fight I and mean, fighting is mainly mental you know and, and he's at such a high level uh, I'm not going to pick any sides I'm not going to pick any sides in this one you know but um, some people got, got to understand sometimes you got to you got to do what you got to do um, anyways uh, who knows who knows what's going to happen with all that I and uh, I'm ready to fight uh, as soon as soon as I'm ready. I mean, I just need a couple extra weeks, and uh, I'll be back. I'll be back uh, in full action. Hi, I'm Eddie Bravo. <laughs> Eddie Bravo came out, um, you know, last week, and uh, we were we were hitting some serious drills, man. We were doing some cool stuff. I've been working Eddie Bravo's system for years now. I mean probably uh, it's probably been four years at least since, since we first hooked up. I went out to LA and trained with him and we kind of took it piece by piece and uh, I started putting stuff together and uh, it's a serious no gi system. He's teaching the same stuff back then as he is now. Just keeps on adding the newest, the best stuff and making little tweaks and stuff so uh, um, having a system 
you know, it's really, it's really helped me out. There were no, you know, there was no offers that I declined or anything like that. Um, I, like I said, I, I just put it out there straight, straight forward to Joe Silva. I said, hey man, this is a blessing. And, uh, you know, I, I need to take some, some extra time off. That's what I look for, man. The technique, a guy can have all the technique in the world. It's like, so what? Like, how is he going to perform under pressure? Lyle Henley, as uh, I've said it a million times before, he is really, and you're going to see in these video blogs every week, how Lyle, is, uh, his, his training is it, <clears throat> so different in, um, and everyone else is out there. My plan when I was training for Vitor is, is uh, to start a, a weekly video blog. A lot of people uh, were asking for, for more videos of training. I was putting out a lot of te technique videos and stuff like that. But hey, I want to see you training. And you know, I know the fans want to see that. People want to see that cool stuff. Um, see what I actually do. And I, I'm not afraid to show it. I don't, um, you know, I don't hold anything back. So we're just gonna we're gonna tape it and, and throw it out there. And, and uh, we we're gonna start doing it. You know, following through the fight. And then I don't know. You know, it's still up in the air, but it's probably, uh, definitely the fat fight's not happening. But uh, either way, without anything happening, anything, either way, the, um, you know, we're releasing this. We're going to try to do it on Mondays. So, uh, you know, do a little video blog. I'm going to keep training. I train year-round. Every, everybody knows that. I may not look like it, but I, I train year-round. Hope to see you soon. This is Alan Belcher with AlanBelcherMMA.com, and this has been a weekly video blog brought to you by our sponsors, TakedownTrap.com and Praetorian.